welcome. I am Cigar and Bar, and this is another episode of Cigar Corner. Slash Pipe Corner. Slash Pipe. Cigar Corner slash Pipe Corner. I am here with the one, the only, at the OCD Piper. Uh, he is uh, hosting me here in his backyard with a couple of the goodies from his own private cellar. So we're going to be having some fun testing out uh, some of his stock today. How's it going today, Jeff? Oh, living the dream. It's weird with your incredible camera setup. And I've got the, the critters staring, trying to figure out what we're doing, because normally it's just an iPhone. <laughs> well, you get to step up a bit and play with some of the big toys today. So Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about these cigars today? So what we're, I picked for us was a Cueva, ex, I think these are the, uh, not Divinios, Exclusi, Exclusivos. Um, so they're still long filler. Um, they're the ones, one, I could afford. Um, but two, rather than like the, the large Presidentes, this is the, I believe, the next size up. So I've had the Divinios, um, like the smaller ones, but they were... Every one that I, I, I kept dealing with with people, they kept saying plugged, 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 plugged. And these ones have a slightly better reputation. Um, we both cut them already, and they are a little bit snug. But so tight on the draw, yeah. It is what it is. Um, it's not uncommon for Habanos. They were stored at 62% uh, humidity, so they are on the drier side. So you think that the, um, the draw would be good. The little nippled foot, that's my air conditioning, um, will restrict the draw for a bit, but in theory, it'll open up. Well, let's give it a try. You've got a, you've got a butane torch you use for your cigars? Oh, yeah. Three and three. All right, I'm just going to try my... So, when it comes to the lighter, I bought higher-end lighters before, but this one came free with a five-pack, and it's by far... This is the one that works? The one that works. That's good. Dollar store actually single flame torches for two bucks. I've used the dollar store ones a bunch of times, and they always end up working for a little while, and then they just die. And then I try to refill them, and nothing else. We've got a little bit of wind here, so I'm thinking that we might have a few touch-ups just because of how much is coming. But yeah, not bad. Yeah. That's wind that I usually get on my balcony right by the lake. So it's uh, it, it's it's better than I get sometimes. Sometimes I just have to decide whether I'm going to have a cigar or a pipe based on the wind. So we're today we're pairing it with what? Where is it? A Scottish favorite. Iron Brew. Iron Brew. My favorite warning on this can, still on here, is warning, not a source of iron, which I just said is going to be Is it still on there? I think I remember it's still on here. Now. They changed the recipe. So a few years ago, maybe a year or so ago, um, they had to change it. So yeah, this is down to 65 calories. So they really changed the recipe in it. And I watched a video about... Um, uh, people saying, can you tell the difference? And you can. You can, you can yeah. a little bit. It doesn't coat your teeth like it used to. <laughs> well, James. Socially distanced visit, in case anyone's curious. Although I am celebrating now that this is uh, two weeks plus a day since my second COVID shot. So I am now in impervious to COVID, apparently. <laughs> Just not the Delta variant. Not the Delta. I am nine days in, second shot. <laughs> That's the wind. Yeah, I started to canoe a little bit on mine. Not too bad. It is opening up. It's got a dry, tart flavor to it. To me, it's got the dry wood, the, the leather, a little bit of pepper in the nose. Yeah, the pepper's definitely there. I like pepper No saltiness in the lips. These are, I like to me like it's got the Cuban twang to it, but they're light to medium body compared to like the Partagas. I actually almost grabbed a Partagas. Uh, uh, what is it, Libre? You know the three ones all wi wiggled oh, yes, together. Yes. But we only had two of us, so I was like, man. Eh. Uh, I'm not gonna rock paper scissors for the third one. Ah. <laughs> eh. But other than that, so, um, yeah, so Jamie came up, um, 
and we've done a little bit of trading, so it's kind of cool. Um, now, I did on my channel tell everybody about the uh, pipe that I um, commissioned. So this was the secondary replacement one because the first one, the guy forgot to um, put a nine millimeter filter on it. And anyway, it was one of those big things. Like when I got the first one, it was beautiful. This one, it's still beautiful. It's a bit more squat, it's a bit thicker walled, but it was um, designed off the Savinelli Octavia. So I really wanted to have the, um, in essence, the panel, but the panel go all the way down the, um, the shank. So this is what I've got now. And in theory, we, if we have time, we will be smoking. I'll smoke it later. And then... This would be the first one that arrived, which was quite nice, but as mentioned, did not have the filter. Doesn't take a filter. So this one is now a part of my collection. Thank you very much, Jeff. And for those interested in the rest of that story, I'm going to post a link to that particular video right up here so you can have a look at that. I still don't know how people do that. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so my thought process was that we could do a little bit of a, a coloring challenge. Now, I will admit, I've had two bowls, I think, out of this. Um, so if you just see the coloring, nothing on the shank, um, two bowls, just because I wanted to see how well it worked. Um, but my thought process is we should do a little bit of an August challenge. Who can color their Meerschaum more in a month? Sounds fun. Now, now, that would be require then that by August 1st, you post a photo of an unsmoked mirror. No, I'm going to use that one. I'm going to ah. use that one because I need to add start because I don't have the same amount of free time that you do. <laughs> I've also been comparing notes on what's in the box. I've got a video that should be posted by now, uh, but um, as of this recording, this video hasn't been posted yet. This is a box of tobacco stuff that I got in the mail. I've just done the unboxing video yesterday, and Jeff has also added to me a couple more tins. So now I'm at about 34 snuffs to try. So in 34 days, I'll have a compilation video, or I'll have a set of videos you need to comment on. Snuff I'll Corner. I'll put a link to that video in there as well, so you can kind of get the idea. Yeah, we're going to have Snuff Corner, or we're going to have one really long snuff film, which doesn't sound good. <laughs> I was watching the um, Snooze at Home video uh, interview with uh, Roderick Laurie um, is the owner of Toke and I think he also owns artisansnuff.com now like as a like distribution and they were making a joke about one of the auto ranges so if anybody's on Snuff House they'll know that uh, you know the, the naming and the coming out of uh, auto was a big deal and auto's the German like the German inspired oiled snuffs from Toke which is more for the beginners right or those that like German style and there's one of them that he go away B there's one of them that he, he named, and us North Americans are getting a little bit of a laugh out of it because the, the Brits just didn't even think about it, apparently. And the it's a direct co competitor to Poshul's uh, Red Bull. So he called his Red Rag. Oh, dear. <laughs> so his thought is, you know, the Red Rag at the bowl yeah. and, and taunting it. But here, a rag is... Something different. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that I'm going to try to feed him today is Frey Borgen Trier's um, High Dry Toast. Uh, that one's got about that much in there. And this there's another one. This is the uh, Jock's Mixture. That I've Jock's got Choice. Sorry, sorry, Jock's Choice. Jock's Mixture is the Rattray's um, pipe tobacco blend. Uh, it's Jock's Choice uh, uh, stuff that I'm going to be trying today as well. Can't have too many in one sitting, or they just they all smell like each other, and there's no point. Yeah, so that's the one, if anybody's seen... Um, Addicted to Pleasure, yeah, with um, Brian Cox. So that's the one from Mullins and Wesley. And apparently with the UK lockdowns, they're not producing, so it's hard to get a hold of everything. So I was watching um, that same uh, Roderick Laurie interview, and he was like, he wants them to be able to produce. It's starting to come back in stock. But Jacques Choice is by far one of the most interesting ones that they make. I think he said it was Neroli oil and Scottish heather. That one is, I, to, I did warn you, it's like two years, a year and a half old, so the scent is slightly faded, maybe two years, um, but it's, you can still smell it. Yeah. It's just not as intense. Anyway, how's your Cueva? It's good. It's, it's burning fast in the breeze here, but it's burning nice and, nice and uh, clear. It's burning, uh, it's drying, as it is, what say. It's, uh, it's nice. It's, it does still have this little bit of that sharp bitterness right in the mouth. But uh, it is a, a, a smoother tobacco on the retro hand. 
you get the oily Cuban twang, a little bit of pepper in the nose, a lot of leather. Mm, yeah. I like them. And then for the price point, for yeah. the price point, they're quite nice. Um, oh, I have two fifty cabs. I don't know if I've showed you those yet. I, acci no. I accidentally bought them. I don't have... <laughs> um, Por La Ronga Petit Coronas and part part of Shorts. Nice. So... Perhaps, maybe, if we have time, we can hit into those, too. <laughs> but that was an accident. Definitely, definitely an accident. Not, not to be repeated. <laughs> no. Um, and I'm sure other people know that it's um, it's not quite as easy to be getting, even in the stores, the, for us anyway, this, um, uh, any cigars, like any, because of the plain packaging. So, uh, so many of the SKUs that uh, Habanos S.A., stop bringing in like one that actually if we had more time a Lonsdale Romeo and Juliet a Casadoras those are really good but they were discontinued here mm. not anywhere else well just here just here discontinued. Uh, a lot of them were because it's not worth their effort right because they've got to reban them yeah and rebox them well speaking of banning that's not an issue I've, I've touched on on my channel yet but um, I've seen that a lot of people I've, for those of you who don't know the plain packaging laws in Ontario Canada uh, Canada um, require that all packaging for tobacco, you know, cigarettes, cigars, pipe tobacco, anything, needs to be packaged in the same standard green with the same standard white font with nothing else. And it, it's, it's a little bit of a downer sometimes because it's fun to see the artwork that the manufacturers put into these things. But one of the workarounds that we're seeing cropping up a lot online, at least in the brick and mortar stores, is people are shipping their product to Canada with a band over a band. So you get it home, you take off the band out of the plain packaging, and the original band is still under, under there. It's but they're, the they're starting to crack down on that. It's illegal for it to leave it intact. Mm -hmm. So they're, the control officers, in theory, are doing drop-ins and checking. If you take the band off, if it doesn't destroy the original one, mm -hmm. it's no good. McBaron, everything. They've even started painting their, teen, their tins green. Mm -hmm. I got a tin of um, Klondike Gold, and it was a green. Like, everything was green. I was quite impressed. It was like, it looks like it's good for camping. Yeah. But it's it's not the same. But we've lost stuff. We we lost all sail blends. The two sail blends. Yeah. Green and yellow. We still have Peterson blends, I think. Yeah, Peterson is. Uh, I think we still have Peterson. Still being sold. I, I see at the brick and mortar in, uh, in Burlington. Uh, I still see a lot of uh, Peterson and Cornell and Deal on the with the plain package table. I see a lot of Cornell and Deal too, actually, which is yeah, interesting because you never used to. But Brigham is big there as well. At that particular brick and mortar, which is the Village Cigar and Barbershop in Burlington. Actually, you know, Brigham, di they discontinued their, um, what was it called, the Heritage Series because of um, when D uh, Dunhill came back. And then when Dunhill went away again and before Peterson took them up, they've been kicking up, they brought back the Heritage Series so you can get, like, the knockoff versions. <laughs> that aren't, that actually aren't bad. If you guys ever look up that um, Klondike Flake, it was made by, blended by R. Will, Rainier Will or something like that and the original batch when it first came out was stored for two years it aged Inc the incredible amount of guys hoarding 100 plus tins wow. and it's all over the pipe smokers mag forum I, I uh, said in a video the other day I was asking uh, clearly for video and Instagram purposes you know all about the gram you want to yeah, you, you want to leave the, the bands on so you get nice pictures of what you're using. What's your opinion on smoking with bands? Do you just take it off when, it, when the ash gets there? Do you take it off when you start? Um, well, you know, the traditional, like the English style, where you don't be a snob and you take it off. Um, I have a lot more followers on Instagram than I do on YouTube. Um, so for Instagram, I will leave them on. If it's yeah. just me, it depends. Like, if it, if it just slides like off like this one... I might just take it off. It just really, it honestly it depends. I yeah. see it more as a nuisance than anything else. Once I get my picture. Once you get the picture. Yeah. Which I didn't take actually a picture for this, so it didn't happen. Picture on Graham now. Well, it'll be, yeah, just tag me. There you go. Good enough. Close it. So I wonder how many people who are watching these videos are like, oh, that's the thing you posted on Instagram two weeks ago. Jeez, it takes him a while to get these things out. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. I will eventually think about posting an Instagram picture <laughs> with the Iron Brew. I might just tell, wait till we have a pipe. But. Mm. It's good weather today. It's nice, 
Yeah, that yesterday was all rainy down in Burlington. That's why I recorded, but haven't posted yet a, an indoor uh, pipe corner episode, which I'm going to try to get up this evening or failing that tomorrow morning, if it's still off tomorrow. Uh, in which, uh, do you follow Boca de Boynton? Yep. Yep. He did a post the other day on Softy Bits. It's, I kind of did uh, a second post uh, mm. on Softy Bits, kind of covering some of the things he didn't cover. So you told everybody to throw them away? <laughs> well, I liked what Boca de Boynton said. He, he said, uh, at the end of this video, he said, don't let anyone talk you into using Softy Bits. And don't let anyone talk you out of using Softy Bits. It's a comfort thing. It's a comfort thing. It's whatever... Whatever you want, he has a very good reason for wanting to use a softy bit. In that, without one, he was causing damage to his pipe. And I'll try to post a link to the video there. Uh, he was he, he he was damaging his pipe, so he had a very good reason to use them. And on some of my pipes, I really like it. Uh, on some of them, I, I don't bother using them. Uh, it depends if you're a clencher. Mm -hmm. So I generally am not. So it's a comfort thing. I, I if I'm having a pipe, I'm sitting down. I am relaxing. If I'm walking around doing something, I'm doing something else. I, I don't multitask very well. Yeah. So, like, I thought about that. Like, I cut the grass before you came, right? I'm like, yeah, I could have a corn cob. I uh, can't multitask. <laughs> it just doesn't work. So some people can, some people can't. But I, can, I, I do see the purpose. I just personally do not. I find that it's, it's uncomfortable. And then it's something else I have to clean. Because there's nothing worse than the first time when you first get into pipes, you put a softy bit on there, and you clean everything but underneath the softy bit, and the one time it slides, you're like, oh. Well, I got the opposite, and I posted in my video that I have my Komoi prints mm -hmm. that I love. Uh, I had the softy bit on there, and when I did a video on it the other week, I took the softy bit off before taking a picture of the pipe, and I had a green oxidation on the stem up to the softy bit, and it was perfect underneath. It was, it, was, it was oxidizing and aging differently. That's how your storage conditions, so it's a vulcanite stem that is getting in the sun. Yeah. Right? So compared to saliva underneath the softy bit, which would cause oxidization if you were, say, like mines are all inside, outside of the sun. So I would oxidize under the softy bit, you would oxidize mm. before it. It just depends on what you're doing with. Yeah. And then there's a line. And then the pipe has to be thrown out. Uh, yeah, I, I mean... Uh, not in, in a derogatory way, not to you know say anything bad against anyone, but there's a reason why his opinion is OCD pipe. <laughs> he has very specific opinions on his pipes, and if they're not just so, then they're 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 just not good enough. The pipe has to go. <laughs> the tobacco has to go. <laughs> Thank anything. You, Childs. If it's not just so, the pipe must go. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you think that that beautiful pipe that I specifically commissioned with absolutely everything I wanted? And then when I got it, it was just like, well, I can't have that. <laughs> and the people are like, well, you just don't like it? No, the world will end. I, I could not use it. I could not enjoy it. It's just, I can't. I'm mad at it. It's done. It has to go. <laughs> just like when things sit. Sitting pipes, yeah. yeah. I was surprised at how much this pipe, it's almost a flat bottom. It's not, though. No, it's not. It's still got a ridge on the bottom. Though. Nope. It looked like it might sit, but then no. There's no way you commissioned a sitter. <laughs> no. Well, for those, I know this is going to be a long video. We might end up taking a break and then yeah, we might split it up into a couple of installments of smoking with OCD Piper. <laughs> um, we've known each other for a very long time. Since 1992, I think? Yeah, for a very yeah. long time. And he follow. I swear, half the time as you follow me because I get mad at my pipes or cigars and... <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah, these are... Go I don't even know how long this has been going for, but... Well, we've, been, we've, been, we've been talking for 23 minutes. So this is going to be a 40-minute cigar. Yeah. The video hasn't been that long at all. I don't think we've got 23 minutes of solid content here. But yeah, other than that, that's all I have to say about this until we eventually move on to the pipes. Yeah. But Well, let's, uh, let's do a cut there. And um, thank you for joining us with Cigar Corner today. I am Cigar and Bar here with special guest hosting me at the OCD Piper. Uh, all the information about this video and where to find the next video in this series, which we're going to continue recording, and it's going to be available in the comments below. So thank you everyone out there in YouTube land, and stay smoking. Make good choices. <laughs>